So, the objective, defining a position paper, identifying situation for position paper writing, gathering and an analyzing agreements, defining and stand on an issue, writing various kind of position paper. Position paper, a formal, usually detained writing statement, especially regarding a single issue that articulates a position, viewpoint, or policy as of government, organization, or political candidates. So, argument, a process of reasoning, series of reason, a statement, reason, or fact of a against a point, opinion, a view of judgment form about something not necessary based on fact or la knowledge. So, what is logical appeal? So, logical affairs refers to a reasonable approach in developing an argument. So, ethnical appears. It refers to your credibility and believability and competence as a writer. Emotional appears. Use, uses arguments in a way that evokes or uncover feelings. Fallacies. What is fallacies? Fallacies is an error in reasoning, a false or a mistaken idea. Now, you have fully understand the topic, so let's proceed. This is the definition and purpose of position paper. Position paper, it is an essay used to present an author's position in a particular issue. A position paper is a powerful instrument for many fields. It can serve business people as well as politicians. The main feature of position paper is that it provides reader with strong evidence. And next is the goal of a position paper. So the goal is to convince the audience your opinion is valid and worth listening to. The primary goal of a position paper is to declare a position on a certain matter or an issue. Its secondary goal is to convince or persuade others to take that side of an issue or matter. And this is the example of definition and purpose of a position paper. So in issue criteria, how do we say that the issue is debatable? How do we say that it's worth writing a position paper form? So. You have to make sure or select an issue that is really debatable, that's being debated, that's being agreed with people. So to take a side on a subject, you should first establish the agreeability of the topic that interests you. So, so agreeability simply means able to be argued or ascertained. So if you say that is agreeable that something is true. So you believe that it can be supported by evidence and that many people will be agree with it. So ask yourself the following questions to ensure that you will be able to present a strong agreements. So again, a position papers about debatable issues. So you cannot make or make up an issue or put up an issue just for a few people only. In position paper, there are three parts, the introduction, body, and conclusion. In introduction, it must be a one paragraph, then start with a topic sentence that attracts attention and summarizes the issue and then inform the reader of your point of view. And also, analyze the source, pull it apart sentence by sentence, and explain the meaning of the source. Identify the perspective the source reflects. Explain your understanding of the ideology and state your position. Okay, take note. If taking a qualified position, state it clearly and precisely. In body, it must be a three paragraph, then explain your first reason to support your position, factual, relevant, and accurate evidence to prove your first argument. Then explain your second argument or reason then factual, relevant, and accurate evidence to prove your second argument. Then, explain your third argument or reason 
and also again factual, relevant, and accurate evidence to prove your last argument. And take note, in general, the strongest or best argument shall be the last. Others will be advised the first argument by the strongest or best, never the middle argument. And lastly, the conclusion. In conclusion, it must be one to two paragraphs. In conclusion, you have to summarize, then conclude your argument, and take note that the conclusion should not merely be a brief repetition of your result. In that case, your discussion would be seem fairly pointless. Focus instead on what your results may imply after careful consideration. Sample outline. Sample outline here has four parts. First is introduction, followed by counter-argument, your argument, and conclusion. First is introduction. First, you need to do is to introduce the topic all about. Next is provide background on the topic to explain why it is important and assert the thesis your view of the issue. More on thesis statements can be found below for reaching purposes only. Your introduction has two purposes. It draws the reader and, and identifies the issue and your approach to it. It also piques their curiosity, setting a topic in its proper context and providing some background information to help put it in perspective is a useful technique for topic introduction. After talking about the general regions that your topic falls within, you should progressively go into your special topic of discussion or see your thesis statement. So next is our counter-argument. You just need to do is summarize the counterclaims, provide supporting information for counterclaims, refute the counterclaims, and give evidence for argument. Asking yourself what someone who disagrees with you may say about each of your points or with your stance overall will help you come up with counter-arguments. Once after coming up with a few or counter arguments, think about how you will answer to them. Why you acknowledge that your opponent has a point, but then provide evidence for why your audience should accept your position instead. Will you refute the counter argument and provide evidence for its errors? In any case, you want the reader to believe that your position is superior to that of the opposition. Be kind what you summarize, the parent points of view, give each point a fair and impartial presentation rather than attempting to make it seem ridiculous. You want to dis demonstrate that you are not only disparaging or criticizing your opponents, but that you have given careful thought to all relevant angles of the matter. Generally speaking, it is preferable to address one or two significant counter-arguments and that as opposed to providing a lengthy but cursory list of several counter-arguments and responses. Make sure your response makes sense in light of your initial claim. Should a counter-argument cause you to reevaluate your stance, you will need to make the necessary revisions to your initial argument. Next part is your argument. A assert point number one of your claims. First, Give your educated and informed opinion. And second is provide support or proof using more than one source, preferably three. Your argument should not consist of fewer than three points, although you may have more than three total. The last but not gonna be the least is conclusion. In conclusion, you just need to do is to restate your argument and provide a plan of action, but do not introduce new information. The simply and most important solution is one that just restates the thesis in new terms before discussing its implications simply. That's all. Discussing the guidelines for writing a position paper. Guidelines are necessary in writing a position paper. They help to ensure that the paper is well-structured, well-argued, and persuasive. Guidelines can also help to avoid common mistakes such as making unsupported claims or using fallacies. For starters, here are some guidelines for writing a position paper. Number one, choose an issue. When choosing one, keep the following guidelines in mind. The issue should be debatable because you won't be able to make a stand if the topic is not debatable. 
the issue should be current or relevant, the issue should be written in a question form and answerable by yes or no. Example, should school uniforms be mandatory? The issue should be narrow and manageable. The topic is narrow and manageable. What do you mean by that? The details are relevant, high quality, and give important information. Details are accurate and support the main idea. Writers write from knowledge or experience. Readers' questions are anticipated in answers. Writing shows insight and a knack for picking out what is significant. Number two, begin the writing process by conducting an in-depth research on the issue. You can start by what, how, when, who, where, and why questions. Number three, make sure to define unfamiliar terms when you first mention them. Clear up the unfamiliar word by giving examples. Number four, be aware of the various positions about the issue and explain and analyze them objectively. Number five, reflect on your position and identify its weaknesses. Number six, cite valid and reliable sources, three or more to establish the credibility of your arguments. Some types of the most reliable sources are scholarly articles or books, professional articles, and well-established newspapers. Number seven, view the issue in a different perspective so you can present unique approach. Evaluate, analyze, acknowledge, and compare. Number eight, limit your position paper in two pages. Number nine, analyze your target readers, like their interests, location, age, gender, occupation, values, and opinions, and align your arguments to their beliefs, needs, interests, and motivations. Number 10, Summarize the other side's counter-arguments and use various evidence and data to refute them. Refutation is the act of countering or disproving an argument or claim. It involves presenting evidence or reasoning that challenges the validity or truth of a statement. The goal is to weaken or invalidate the opposing argument, often to strengthen your own position and demonstrate your deep knowledge of the topic. Number 11. Use an active voice as much as possible to achieve dynamic and a firm one. An active voice is a sentence structure in which the subject performs the action of the verb. In other words, the subject is a doer of the action. The active voice is typically considered to be more direct and concise than the passive voice, in which the subject is the recipient of the action. 12. Arrange your evidence logically using an inductive or deductive approach. Inductive and deductive reasoning are two fundamental methods of logical argumentation. They differ in their approach to drawing conclusions from evidence. Inductive reasoning is a bottom-to-up approach that starts with specific observations and moves towards general conclusions. Deductive reasoning, on the other hand, is a top-to-down approach that starts with a general principle or rule and moves towards specific conclusions. Number 13. Check your argument for fallacies and eliminate them. Fallacies are errors in reasoning making your argument. Fallacies often involve faulty reasoning or misleading tactics to persuade or deceive others. They can take various forms, such as attack attacking the person, making the argument, rather than addressing the argument itself. Recognizing fallacies is important for critical thinking and ensuring the accuracy and soundness of arguments. Examples of fallacies are informal fallacies. An informal fallacy is a flaw in the logical structure of an argument that is not related to the form of the argument. <clears throat> and the other one is formal fallacies. A formal fallacy is a flaw in the logical form of an argument that renders it invalid regardless of the truth or falsity of its premises. Number 14. Use ethical, logical, and emotional appeal. An ethical appeal relates to your credibility and competence as a writer. A logical appeal refers to a rational approach in developing an argument, while an emotional appeal uses arguments in a way that evokes feelings. I'm going to state a logical relationship, and then I'm going to state its definition. The first one is similarity. It's used and also in the same way just as, so too, likewise, and similar. The next one is exception slash con contrast. It's used but 
However, in spite of, on the other hand, on the other hand, neither less, not, nonetheless, none would stand and contrast in the contrary still yet. And the next one is sequence or order. So it's use first, second, third, then next, and finally. So next is the time. It's use after, afterward, at last, during, currently, during, early, immediately, later, meanwhile, now, continuously, subsequently, and then. An example, an example ex of example is, for example, for instance, namely, specifically to illustrate. Then the next one is emphasis. It's used even, indeed, in fact, accurately, and truly. Then the place or the position is used above, advance, below, beyond, here, in front, in back, near, and then. Then the cause and effect, it used accordingly, constantly, hence, so, therefore, and those. So the next one is additionally support or evidence. It's used additionally, again, also, and as well, beside, equal, equally important, further, therefore, in addition, moreover, and then. Then the last one is the conclusion slash summary. It's used finally, in a word, in brief, in conclusion, in the end, in the final analysis. On the other hand, the, to the conclude, to summarize, in sum, and in summary. Grammar and spelling are important because they ensure clear readable and professional communication impacting everything from comprehension to academic and professional success make sure your paper doesn't have mistake or grammar or mistaken in grammar and spelling so double check it if your paper if your paper is doesn't have that before turning in it for turning it in so if you need help, you can ask help or check any website for our reference. Plagiarism and academic analysis. Why it is important? Because, because they uphold the integrity of scholar, scholarly work, foster a culture of trust, and ensure that individuals receive, receive credit from their original ideas. Promoting fairness and ethical conduct in education and professional environment. Prejudicism is stealing, and just like other crime, it's not knowing. Not knowing is not an excuse. To avoid plagiarism, give credit with average due. If you use someone else's idea, acknowledge it. Even if you change the words or summarize it, always give credit when using another person idea opinion or theory along with any fact statistic graphic drawing or information that isn't called i will discuss about writing with style and clarity many students make the mistake of thinking that the content of their paper is all that matters although the content is important I will not mean much if the reader can understand what you are trying to say. You may have some great ideas in your paper, but if you cannot effectively communicate them, you will not receive a very good mark. Keep the following in mind when writing your paper. Example, clearly state your position on the topic, less and refute the counter Argument to your position includes supporting data and evidence to back up your arguments. Diction. Diction refers to the choice of words for the expression of ideas, the construction, disposition, and application of words in your essay. With regard to climes, accuracy, variety, etc., mode of expression, and language. Example, informal. Hank told us 
test wouldn't give us the right result. Colloquia. You are gonna wanna see the weak test Hank is doing. Slang. Hank test is far out, but the result is going to be groovy. Concrete. Hank type result into the computer. Paragraph. Paragraph creating the clear paragraph is essential. Paragraph come in so many sizes and patterns that no one single formula could possibly cover them all. The two basic principles to remember are this paragraph. First, a paragraph is a means of developing and framing an idea of impression as the general rule you should address only one major idea per paragraph. Second, the division between paragraph aren't random but indicate a shift in focus in other words you must carefully and clearly organize the order of your paragraphs so that they are logically positioned show out your paper transition will help with this example example of paragraph contains a topic sentence details and conclusion there are many different kinds of animals that live in china tigers leopards are animals that live in china Forests, the north in the jungles, monkeys swing in the trees, and elephant walk through the brush. Transition. In academic writing, your goal is to convey information clearly and concisely, if not to convert the reader to your of thinking. Transition help you to achieve these goals by establishing connection between sentence, paragraph, and section of your papers. In other words, transition tell readers what to do with the information you present them. Example, after 